I'm not a librarian, but I work with library metadata in Wikipedia and Wikidata, Wikidata being a structured data complement to Wikipedia. At the bottom of Wikipedia article, there's sources cited. If someone puts information into Wikipedia, it has to be fact-checked in some way. The way that we manage quality control in Wikipedia is that the claims in Wikipedia are backed by a reference, a citation, to a reliable source. The Wikipedia community does a lot of fact-checking, and for this reason, we need good access, good management to all the sources of knowledge in the world. This is what we're going for. I'm going to be talking about Wikipedia's management of citation metadata. I'm going to explain what this is. I'm going to say why this is bigger than Wikipedia, and I'm going to say how anyone can think about this. If you're not into libraries or information science and Wikipedia is not your thing, this is still useful for you to hear because what I have to say, it describes the state of the world right now. In a certain number of years, people aren't even going to believe that this problem existed. Uh, the problems that I'm going to describe, they've been around for a long time. I'm gonna say why they existed, why they're, they're kind of interesting for people to know about. And I'd like for you to imagine with me how wonderful the world is going to be when I and people like me have access to the information we need to manage fact-checking, quality control, and get people the resources they need. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm not a librarian. How do you do? My name is Lane Raspberry. I'm Blue Raspberry on Wikipedia. Uh, I'm in the School of Data Science at the University of Virginia, and in Wikipedia, I participate in projects including the Wiki Site Project and Wiki Project Source Metadata on on, on Wikidata. So here, here's the problem, here's the problem. Supposing there's a scholar, they're an expert in whatever they do, and you would like a list, a bibliography of everything that person's published. Can you have it? No, the answer is no, you can't have it. There's nobody in the world that can give that to you. There's some people that you, you do have a bibliography for, generally people who are more privileged, uh, more recognized, somehow they get indexed. And yes, there are big commercial companies. Google makes a product called Google Scholar that attempts to do this, but uh, even right now, we're in 2022, there's many, many problems with Google. Google hasn't sorted it out. Uh, and there's other commercial companies, they, they do this in other ways. When you, you find products that are available to do this, either either or both, the, the information's problematic in itself, or somebody charges a lot of money for you to access the information. In my view, this information should be free. There should be open citations and it should be easy to get access to them. So I've just said, if you have a, a scientist or a researcher at a university, at a research institute, you want their bibliography, you can't have it. Like sometimes you can have it, but you, you can't have, it's not universally available for everybody, okay? Here's, here's another problem. Supposing there's a journal, a magazine, a venue for publication. So somebody submits their good research and expertise in publication to a journal that's going to publish their articles. And journal, some journals have been around for, for decades. People submit to journals. Supposing you want all the, the list of all the papers that come from a journal. You can't have that either. It, it's completely obvious. If you, if you go to a publisher's website, you would think, can I have the list of everything you've ever published? The answer's usually no. And if it is available, it's just hard to circulate this data around the internet because it's not structured or it's not exportable or there, there's some kind of problem with it. And what I would like is universal access to this information. I'm talking about metadata. So imagine, this is what I'm talking about, this is what I want. There's an article, it's text, 10, 10 page article, I don't want that. What I want is the metadata that says, what is the title of the article, who, who wrote the thing, what journal was it published in, what, what year was it, was it published, the information that would go in the citation. So if there's a Wikipedia article pulling knowledge out of an article, article in Wikipedia pulling knowledge out of a scholarly article, the Wikipedia article has a citation in the references section pointing to that article. That's the information I want, the information in, in the citations. If we had all the citation metadata in Wikidata, 
then we would be able to do a process called scholarly profiling. And again, a couple of the things that I want to do with scholarly profiling is for a given person can have everything they've ever published. For a given journal can have everything ever published in that journal. And I'll tell you another one. This isn't part of a conventional citation. So our, our problems begin here. We're, we're not even getting past citation metadata. I want the institutional affiliation of every author. So at the top of the paper where it says author is this person, there's a comma and then it says University of Virginia or whatever research institute. That historically has not appeared in the citation itself, but it's right at the top of the paper. And one w might expect that if you had other metadata, data about the, the, the paper itself, ab about the paper, then you could get the institution. Uh, we're going to sort this out very quickly with artificial intelligence and data science, but right now it's still problematic to get the institution. And if I could have the institution associated with metadata, not only would I be able to get a profile of a person or a journal, but I could also say, can I see all the papers published by researchers at the University of Virginia or any other arbitrary institute? And that's not possible right now either. So I want citation metadata to do scholarly profiling. Let me give a little aside. I'm going to tell you some more data that I want. But I am one of the contributors, developers, organizers of a Wikidata Wikipedia project called Scolia. Scolia is a, it's a website. It's a web tool. It's a browser-based app where somebody can type in the name of an author, and we attempt, we pull information out of Wikidata, our, our database for, for Wikipedia, pull information out, and we attempt to give them this information. So by and by, I'm collecting this information, citation metadata, wherever I can, and I'm putting it into Wikidata so that we can, we can provide this, this service. And there's, there's other people in the marketplace providing this service. There's some things that Wikipedia and Wikidata can do that the others can't do. Like, for example, in Wikipedia, we never have to think about commercial viability. Whatever we collect, we're giving it away for free. That's what Wikipedia does. So we don't have a sales model for this. Uh, we, can, we can think about social and ethical issues. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to raise, raise some of those. Uh, we can clear the marketplace. So when we give things away for free, if we were a commercial entity, all the commercial companies have to think if, if they give this stuff away for free, then that helps their competitors and then they lose out on the products. So in, in Wikipedia, we, we never have to think about this. And so that's one of the reasons why we're able to, sh to, to share stuff for free because we're expecting people to get it for free. And also, uh, we're able to tread into social and ethical issues. I'm going to tell you why, why that's, um, that's important in just a bit. So now let's talk about a second category of data. First, I told you I just want plain citation metadata. Now I'm going to describe a second category of data that I want curated metadata. Curated metadata is information that you can't get directly from the citation metadata, but somebody makes a jump in logic or, or does some kind of analysis and they get more information. So for example, I want topics of every paper, keywords you could say, the different levels of topics. Would it be possible to sort all the papers by what field of study or expertise they're in? So for example, if some, an article is published in a medical journal, is it a medical paper? That's a, that's a fair guess. If it's published in a humanities journal, is that a humanities paper, or archaeology, or dance, or whatever the, whatever the case may be? Uh, if you know the, the journal titles, often you can have some idea of what the topics of papers are. And if you go deeper into the paper, if someone looks at the title of the paper, often you can get a very specific topic, maybe match a topic to an article in Wikipedia. Uh, so I want every single paper ever published to also have topic tags or topic labels, category labels, to say what is the, the field of it. And if I had that, then if someone did a search in Scolia of Wikidata, this scholarly profiling front end, then you could give a given topic and then get the list of every paper on that topic it's just not possible to do that for, for free right now or complete. They're, the same problems apply. They're even more complicated with topic. There's other kinds of curated metadata I want. I would like research resources. This is kind of a, a made-up concept. No one talked about this before the pre-digital era, and 
we, we talk about it in wiki data but i i want things like what are the the methods used in a research paper what resources did someone take to pr produce the research things like software if, if someone says here's my research and you can trust my research because i use this piece of software the paper just name drops the software but if you want to verify the paper itself then you have to jump out of the paper go check out the software somewhere and the the problem with software is the same with other things that I want, it's it's not metadata, it's not searchable. Someone actually has to read the paper, or you have to send a human or a robot into the paper to pull out all the, all the mentions of, of software. And then you add that to the structured data collection with the other metadata. And then people can ask questions. What software was used in a given paper? What software does a particular person use? What software do researchers use if they're publishing in a given journal? Like what's all the software mentioned in a given journal? So if we could text mine or uh, all the mentions of software and connect that, link the data to the papers, then you can run other kinds of queries, get other kinds of insights. Besides software, I want other things. We're in a, a data science age. People say in their papers, I use such and such data set and here's my results. They'll show you a, a table summary of some of the results, but they have a full data set somewhere else. And sometimes they name their data sets, sometimes they don't. I think everybody should name their data sets. Whatever the case, I want data sets tagged in the same way. Supposing you're a medical researcher and you're dealing with some kind of biological cell line, uh, all these cell lines have identifiers. Those could be linked to the papers also. They're not currently done this way. There's, there's other kinds of research resources. Uh, something it's, it's uh, re related to this, but acknowledgements in the paper. Supposing somebody says in the paper at the bottom, thanks to this foundation for giving me money, then you could connect the grant to the paper, the, the funding source to the paper, and then of course you connect the paper to the person, to the institution, and you can say, for the University of Virginia, what grants went into the research that year. So you can't do that right now. It's right there in the paper. A human could just read the paper and see the grants right there. But if you want to do this for a thousand, ten thousand 10,000 papers at a time, it's just not possible. We have to extract the metadata, link it to the papers. This is curated metadata. So we've talked about citation metadata. I've described curated metadata. Now I'm going to describe a third class of, of data which if you have the citation metadata and you have curated metadata, then you can start to examine indirect data. This is information that is not in the publication itself, but if you start having lots of data about lots of publications and organizations and people, then you can get other kinds of insights that are useful. Very, very, very interesting stuff. Like, for example, this is something that people are discussing a lot in science, uh, demographics of the authors. There's activist movements that say this minority group is underrepresented in science, and they, they ask questions like, is it the case? Could they, could they really be underrepresented? How would you find that out? There's also public data sets, like, for example, if there's a women in science conference, perhaps people register to say, I'm a woman in science. And then you can get gender data. We can bring that into Wikidata. And there's Wiki Project Women Scientists in Wikipedia. This is an effort to create biographies for women science scientists. So people are actually asking these questions. We have demographic data available. And there's also demographic data available for people who speak different languages or from different countries, what, whatever is important for demographics. There, there's ways that we can get some of this data. If we could apply that to authors, then you could say, what are the demographics of the people who are publishing in a given journal? What are the demographics of people who are publishing at a university? Is it, is it okay to ask this kinds of things? Other kinds of indirect data that I would like, supposing that there's a university and they've got ethics policies. They say, if you're going to be doing animal research, then you need to comply with this ethics policy. Or supposing they say, if you're going to be doing medical research on human test subjects, then you need to get ethical approval 
from a review committee that makes sure your research is safe and ethical. It, it meets the standards of our university. Or supposing it's, it's not exactly about ethics, supposing it's about money. The university says that if you've got a grant, you need to report it in your paper, you need to report it to your department, and you need to track it in, in such and such a department. Or supposing there's reporting compliance requirements with the sponsor. Like, for example, the U.S. government might say if you receive taxpayer funding to do your research, then you need to deposit your data set in a particular repository so that other scientists can double check you and make sure that your, your research is correct and valid and they interpret it the same way. There's a range of other policies that might be in place and the policies won't always be mentioned in the publication themselves. However, if you know that there was a paper and it was published by someone at a university, then maybe you should, you could, should, assume, presume or want to check, did this paper comply with policy requirements of that institution? And if you had all the policy requirements of, of different institutions, meaning the people who are doing the research, the people who are funding the research, people who are overseeing the research in other ways, then you could get more information about the research. This is also metadata that we could be applying, not to the papers themselves, you apply that metadata to whoever enforces these, these policy requirements. The last kind of indirect data that I'm going to describe is network effects. There's so many networks that could be analyzed. A human brain would have trouble sorting this out, but we're in a computer age, and it's possible to talk about what are the effects of a network. Like, for example, you have an author, they publish a paper, and this is a paper published by multiple people, say five people collaborate together. Then you might say, how do these people know each other? What's the relationship? And you could, if you had all the papers indexed and you knew all the authors of all the papers, then you could say, okay, these people, they, they've been publishing papers together for a few years and they're at this institution and this university and they've got a good relationship. But to what extent would it be meaningful or insightful if you found out that there were a couple of universities that frequently work together? Like, could you get insight out of that? There's certain things that you could say about that. Or supposing we found out that there's a particular funder or maybe a US government agency that for whatever reason, for a particular kind of research, they only fund people in a given region, say the Northeastern United States. And those grants don't go to anyone else anywhere in the country. Someone might ask, why is that? You can only examine these kind of network effects if you have the citation metadata for everything ever published. You need some more curated metadata to see what's going on and then some, some indirect data. I'll, I'll just be blunt, indirect data. If we had demographics and citation metadata and topics, you could ask, why is it the case that only people of a certain race and gender get funded to do certain kinds of research? And if we had this data, you just start pushing the buttons on the computer, it spits out these network analysis reports, and you find all kinds of odd and uh, odd trends in funding and research that you wouldn't be able to find if this data wasn't public. Again, I'm not asking for any private data. Everything that I'm asking for, none of this can be copyrighted. It, I'm not asking for the text of papers. I'm just asking for the things that a librarian would use to, to catalog all this, all this stuff. And I'm asking for the data to be freely available. I'm, I'm asking to get this data so that I can put it into Wikidata and, and start doing these kind of reports. There's a lot of commercial companies that would never want to touch these kinds of social and ethical issues, but in the Wiki community, we can, we can talk it through. Like we can, we can host this data. We can convene community conversations and say, here's the ethical issue that we've identified. Let's talk about it. We're gonna convene this conversation. We're gonna get dozens or hundreds or thousands of people to show up and they can say whatever they wanna say about this and this is what we're going to be doing. To get the citation metadata, much of it's public. There's already activist efforts for me to get plain, un uncurated citation metadata. I get this, I, I put it into Wikidata by and by. There's, there's reasons why we can't put it in all, all at once. I, I'm, I'm, we're going as fast as we can. It's, it's me, and, me and the other people in Scolia and Wikisite and Wiki Project Source Metadata and a, a bunch of other projects that don't even know they're curating metadata. But in Wiki, uh, every time somebody does something, it contributes back to the, the platform and makes all the data better. Curated metadata, there's a, a few places that I can get this. Uh, in some cases, you can use crowdsourcing. 
like ask people, can you topic tag all these papers by subject or a given researcher does it for their own benefit and by and by we get a little bit of data. We can also use data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning to curate all this metadata, send a robot in to a pile of papers, say robot, here's 10 million papers. I need you to, to sort them out in this way. I need you to tell me what the topics of each of these papers are. I need you to go into the acknowledgement section and pull out every time someone thanked a funder or mentioned a grant name. Robot, can you look in every part of the paper and try to identify every time someone said that they they use software to do their research or they here's their data set somewhere. Robot, I, I need all this information. We, we can organize this. I'm at a school of data science. This is what we do. Another source of this information is just being aware of who else is doing this. There's a lot of research organizations that they'll send in their robots to pull out some kind of information. They, they publish about this. These are, these are in the papers. They publish papers about these sometimes. And if I, if I had a robot to find those papers, then I could take the data sets that they mention and sometimes share, sometimes don't share, and I could, I could put those into Wikidata. And the end result is this doesn't go on forever. This, do, this does not go on forever. Like this is where we are right now. And once we get all this data, there is a completeness to it. Like if I had the list of all the software used before the year 2020 in every academic paper and that was a public data set, that's done. Like no one's ever going to go back in time and publish more before 2020. You, you, you finish this and it's available for humanity for the rest of time for as long as people can sustain a shared data set. As long as humanity doesn't collapse, we have, the, we have this done forever. The, the last thing that I need, so to, to get the citation metadata, uh, undergraduate student support, I suppose. Undergraduate student researchers, very helpful if I had that sponsorship. Curated metadata, working with graduate students who can do some machine learning projects or undergraduates increasingly or people to, to go around to organizations and beg, ask, please give us your data set for Wikipedia. You like Wikipedia, don't you? A lot of people would donate data sets for us to import if we just ask them. Somebody's got to ask though. Uh, the, the last part, the most interesting, ethics. Things that we can discuss social and ethical issues in, in Wikipedia. Supposing you had an ethical problem with the way that Google was presenting their data in Google Scholar, you can't contact Google. They, they won't talk to you. They're a big commercial company and even if they would talk to you, they wouldn't talk to you publicly. You can't ask them anything. They're, they're not available on call. There's some other publishers that are valued at a billion dollars more, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue. And if you want to talk to those people, they would never talk to you without getting approval from their communication manager and their lawyer. And if you wanted to ask them social and ethical questions, they just can't talk like humans. Wikipedia and Wikidata are platforms where people meet. They speak very frankly. They can talk to each other, talk about anything. I make mistakes. I. I don't have to be ashamed of that because I'm just giving this data away for free. If it's my company's commercial model that this data be of a certain quality and we maintain our reputation, it's troublesome to admit if you're with a company, an employee of a company, that, that you've made a mistake or that a social or ethical problem could even exist because that can hurt the reputation of your company. There's a conflict of interest in talking about problems. It's a lot of people's jobs to either say there are no problems or if there are problems to, to spin them in some way to say that they, they don't exist. There's not many places where you can have social and ethical discussions about what you should do, what the problems are, who's benefiting from these things, who's not benefiting from these things. I, I'll tell you the bias that exists in all of this. No matter what a university researcher like me does or what a nonprofit activist does, just because of the bias in the infrastructure of society, every, everything I do, it tends to, to benefit powerful, wealthy, commercial entities. And it tends to create greater disparities among people who don't have the power. Like for example, the easiest kind of data for me to curate is medical data because it's such high quality and it's so standardized and the websites are so good. If I want to curate data in the humanities, it's problematic for me to even access it because they just use older technology and there's, there's all kinds of things being left behind. And I, I don't want 
to propagate these disparities. I'm, I'm doing my best, but I've got to talk about this publicly. So many other wiki editors would like to talk about this publicly too. And we're doing this by and by. I'm, I'm at my university. I'm, I'm always seeking sponsorship and collaborators to do more. I, I wish that I could hire more students and, and get them on this. Uh, as do many other people at many other universities and, and research institutes. We're all in this together. So thanks for hearing me out talking about scholarly profiling, the Wikidata tool, Scolia, which enables this in the browser for anyone for free. Wikidata, the structured data collection, which is managing citations for Wikipedia and the world. You don't have to be in Wikipedia to use this. Wikisite, which is our collection of this data. Wiki Project Source metadata, which talks about how we're going to put content in Wikisite. And the citation metadata, the curated metadata, and the indirect data that I want to make all this work. We're going to do this. Thanks for coming with me on this. <laughs>